Hi, it's Kate again. So this time we're going to make a little pumpkin that is going to be um, held together with crossover bands. And we're going to use the move it forward technique. So you are going to need your rainbow loom hook with the base removal tool at the bottom of it. Okay, and we're going to put eyes and mouth on this one. Let's get started. We're going to have our loom in the standard configuration. So all the columns are gonna be the same height. The open part of the peg is facing towards you or the arrow is facing towards you. And we're going to be placing our bands um, two together at a time, which is called double banding. Okay, so you have two bands and you put them together and you place them on your loom at the same time. Okay, so let's move forward like this. We're putting one, two, three, four, five, and six. So there's going to be six pair on each of these columns of pegs. Now we're going to be doing 13 columns and as you can see we only have three columns on our loom which is why we move things forward. It's a great way of being able to do um, larger projects on a single loom. You can do murals with it and I have some designs, uh, patterns up there for you to see on my webpage, which is www.isalicious.com. Um, and I also have some tutorials that you can watch showing you how to do some of the murals. At the end of each of these, you're going to put a single band, wrap around your hook once and twice as an end cap, and pop one on the end here. Now, the first three columns are just plain orange, okay? So there's our end caps. We're going to place crossover bands over them, like this, which is a single orange band that you're stretching to go across these three pegs. All right, now, uh, yeah. What we're going to do is loop up the first column and the second column. So let's dig down and loop this up. Now you are going to need a holding hook of sorts. Hey, come back here. No escaping today, thank you very much. Push things down on your loom if you feel that things are trying to go walk about on you. So there's our first column looped up. Let's loop up our second column, the middle one. Let's do it so you can actually see what I'm doing. It would help, wouldn't it? And so there's our second column. All right. Now, what I'm going to do, as I said, using a holding hook, could be a pencil or whatever, you're going to take this first column off the loom. Just the first one, nothing else. Push everything down. You don't want that second column coming free. Turn your loom over. Let's move our base plates. We're just moving the little ones at this stage and budging them forward. That's why it's called move it forward technique, isn't it? <laughs> then take your column of pegs and place that here. Now, on column four, we are going to do the start of his mouth. So let's place some of our bands three, four, and at five, we're going to put a pair of black bands. And then six, take a single band, wrap once and twice and place here on the end, like that. Let's drag this across. These are the crossover bands that we're dragging across. Loop up your center column. And as I said, there's a variety of different ways of creating similar kind of items. This one is similar to the first pumpkin I did, but 
it is joined together whereas the other one is an open ball this one will be a closed one move your base plates just moving the big one forward and then taking that column of pegs and moving that forward so that it can become column number five we're going to place our bands Now this time I'm going to put an orange one here because I'm going to make him try and look a bit like a jack-o'-lantern. So I'm going to put two here and then I'm going to put my cross um, end cap on the bottom here. Like that. Now, as I said, this is column number five. I'm going to start with new crossover bands here. So take a single band and stretch it across. You never want to stretch the crossover bands over too many columns because otherwise you run the risk of things breaking, going out of shape, all sorts of things. Let's loop up. Now you're wanting to pull those crossovers back with the back of your hook. There's two of them to push back with the back of your hook so you can get those two bottom bands. All right, let's take this third column off. Move our base plates. Place our bands. Now this is column number six. So I'm going to be doing two pair and then I'm going to use two pair of black for the eyes. Now how I'm going to do the eyes is a little bit different. I don't want them to just be normalized so I'm going to put orange bands there but then I'm going to take two black bands and put them wrap it around my hook like that. So I put them on my hook, wrap them on my hook and I'm going to place, oops if I don't make sure I don't unravel them, there we go, I'm going to place it here on top of that peg and I'm going to flip that over kind of like a, um, a belt. Put my next pair of orange and then it's a pair of black and then a pair of orange and an orange end cap. We're going to stretch our crossover bands over like that and we will loop up our middle column. Another one trying to escape me. <laughs> there we go. Take this off your loom. Push everything down, you don't want anything going walk about. Let's move our big base plate. And we'll lay our bands for column number seven. Number seven is not going to have an eye, we're going to have a space between the eyes, which is why we're doing 13 instead of 12 columns. So we're going to do our mouth. Now we don't want to do a mouth here, we want to do one under. So two orange and then two black and then our end cap. Drag your crossover bands over and let's loop up. Where we're here, we're going to have a little bit of a problem because this crossover band is going to get in our way a little bit. So I'm just going to lift it up and put it on top of that peg. Loop that up. Now, under here, you can see there's the two top bands, the two top loops, and then there's the two bottom loops. 
go under the two bottom loops keep your thumb here so that you don't lose your black band your bands they don't fall off now what you want to do is grab those black bands and I sort of twist my hook around a few times to grab them and you want to come out the back of the peg with them and pull them forward now as you see I didn't get all of them so I'm going back to get that last one like that now I'm going to push my hook through split those bands again so I have two on my hook replace the crossover band and then put those two orange bands back that's the first eye all right like that push everything down and then let's take this column off turn your loom over and move your column of pegs now you should remember also that this doesn't have to ne just necessarily be a pumpkin head you can make any kind of head you know like this it's just a 3d ball with a face on it okay so now we're on what are we number number eight I've got a little piece of paper that I'm just crossing things off number eight we do need to do our eye on number eight so let's put our bands on then we get two black bands if you remember we do a twist like that and we place them on the peg if I can get my fingernails working up here to flip down we're going to put black bands here for the mouth because we had them below before a pair of orange and an end cap in orange now how many have we gone across for these bands these crossovers one two three four let's put a new pair let's new set sorry not a pair it's a single so single band between the center and the right and this will be our last set of crossover bands and we will dig down and loop up those first two black bands remember you're pushing through two crossover bands here so make sure you push them back with the back of your hook like that let's take this one off our loom turn it over and we're moving our big base plate and then our column of pegs okay so we are on column number nine we have a mouth to put on column number nine single wrap it once and twice on your hook and place on that peg drag your crossover bands over and dig down I'm sorry I said that was our last set of crossovers we've got one more ah now do you remember here we need to push this crossover band above the eye place the bands that we loop up there now we need to dig down under this bottom pair to grab those black bands there we go I've got some of them doesn't matter if you don't get all of them at the same time make sure you are in front of the crossover bands pull those forward now we have to split these there's four loops you're going through the top two grab them on your hook replace your crossover band and put those back push everything down and we have one more piece of mouth to do let's take this off our loom the 
we're moving our mini base plates forward. We're now on column number 10. This is our last piece of mouth. Our black bands there, whoopsie. There we go. And now our orange, and then our single orange as our end cap. How many have we dragged through? One, two, three. So we'll do it through four. Three, four, and we will loop up. Okay, let's take my little holding hook is getting full here. <laughs> Turn your base plate over, the loom over and remove your base plate. Budget forward. Move your column of pegs. We're now on 11. These 11, 12 and 13 are just going to be double bands of orange. I'm going to use new crossovers And these will be our last ones. They will stretch to column 13. Like that. Take down through the middle one. And we loop up. Can you see these little faces forming here? I'm getting full on there. I should have picked a hook that didn't have a handle so I would have more room. Slimmy. Alright, so that was 11. I'm on 12. So we have one more after this. And if you don't want to do one more, that's fine. It doesn't really matter. I just wanted to have, um, let me show you, I have three empty columns here, so I wanted to have three empty columns, I've only got one and two, so that's why, it's the OCD in me. <laughs> I'm going to make sure my bands don't fall off my holding hook. Oops. Last Drag these across. And 
and loop up both. Oh, I've got my end cap here. Let's do that. Okay, so we're going to squeeze this all onto my hook here, which doesn't have much room. One, two, and three. Take it off our loom and move that out of the way. Now, rather than just having um, two bands to put it all onto, I'm going to do it similar to how I did my the stand-up skirts. So we're going to take four bands, two in this hand, two in this hand, cross them over like that, and you're going to basically be pulling, or you can do it actually on your hook. Put one set on, put the other set on the end of your hook like that. Move those two into the middle and reclaim the end like that okay then you're going to take the closest ones to you up over and off and pull tight all right so that's how you tie a knot between the two so I'm going to use two bands or two bands tied to two bands on this so that you don't have too much of a problem keep it taut by taut I mean tight you don't want the uh, loops to slip off and then you have to start again that's annoying slide these loops on all of them onto those two bands okay like this and budge them across if you need to onto the second set like that see how they're all moving across you should be only left with two bands on the end of your hook and then reclaim your other two from the other side all right make it budget across make it even that's fine take the two closest to you up over and off and you pull tight okay into a slip knot like that that's what you want you want it to be nice and tight Trying to make it easier for myself, and I'm actually making it more difficult. There we go. Let's see if that works. I need to pull this through tight. There's so many bands now. There we go. Oop. <laughs> but I've tied a knot at the end here, if you can see that. Okay. I'm going to hide this inside. That's going to go inside the actual um, head. Okay. And we're going to loop it up like that. What we're going to do next is go through all the little end cap loops. Like this. There's three little loops on the end of each chain. I like to, when I do thread it on, I do like it to be two bands because I feel if one breaks, then at least you've got the other as an insurance policy. I'm only going to go through two bands this time because going through having the other two attached was a bit difficult for me. So go through, pull them all on. Like that. Reclaim the end of those two bands. Okay. Take the two closest to you, up, over, and off. All right, so this is his head, as you can see. What we're going to do is we need to stitch this up. So I'm going to take two bands, and I'm going to be going through 
if you have a look here you can see the chain you've got two side two sides to each loop you've got the inside and the outside we're going to go through the two bands on the inside and the two bands on the inside of both sides <laughs> okay put two bands on and drag through like that okay now don't reclaim go through the other two from the inside and the other two from the inside and then reclaim take another two bands put them on your finger pull through okay so we're working our way up the back here and you only want to go through the two inside bands on either side inside, two inside, I was looking at some crocheting sites, I've never learned to crochet and uh, this is sort of a crochet move which I quite like so I'm trying to teach myself how to crochet through. Now if you look, hey get up there, <laughs> hang on a second, I want to show you at the top here. So we've got two more to go through. I'm trying to just get the two inside, there's two and there's two, like that. Now what I'm going to do is use the two bands that are tied off with. Might as well make use of them hey? <laughs> and pull those through like so. And I'd like to have a bit of extra. There we go. Take two green bands and I want to go through the front here opposite his eyes. I'm going to pull one side of the green band through there, grab onto the other side here, and now, sorry, I'm just squidging it into shape. What I want to do is pull it so that this goes through like that into a slip knot, and then you can let that go as the string well, at the top. And there you have your pumpkin. And as you, as you can see, it's perfect to use as a head for our headless horseman. So that's what we're going to be doing. Okay, so there is our little jack-o'-lantern head. I hope you enjoy making him. Take care.